cannot give you back your homes or restore your dead to life, but perhaps I can give you justice in the name of our king. Hey everyone, today we are going to talk about Arya Stark. There has been a lot of requests regarding her plot in Season 7, like who she is going to kill, where is she going, her relationship with the Hound, as well as her relationship with Jack and Hagar, or the faceless man that uses his face. So with all of that being said, if you are not caught up with Season 6, just know that there will be plenty of spoilers ahead. Okay, so Arya Stark is back in Westeros, and the last we saw of her, the young lady was baking pies with the corpses of the Frey family in the Riverlands. Not quite the furthest place from the north, and mainly Winterfell, which Jon and Sansa have just taken back from the Boltons. As we all know, Game of Thrones is running out of episodes, given the series ends after season 8. What's more is there will be fewer episodes for the last two seasons as well. That's a lot of material and plot lines to cap off before the book is closed on this fantasy. And when I say a lot of material, I don't just mean what we read on the surface of the books. There's so much more history and lore when reading between the lines, and one example of this is Arya's list, the list of people she vows to murder. And even after her long time spent in Bravos, she hasn't changed her focus from seeking personal revenge for her family and friends, as we can see from her slicing Walder Frey's throat at the end of Season 6. Arya Stark is well on her way of checking the rest of the names off of her list but it's been a while since we've heard the list recited. Who is still on it? Well, unbeknown to Arya, some of these characters have actually perished due to reasons not forced by her own hand. While time skips a lot in the series to cover as much material as possible, I won't go into how she would go about finding out the fates of each person, dead or alive, occupying a spot on her list. Let's just assume that Arya will continue her skills as no one and peg people of Westeros for the status of certain characters. Currently, Arya has Cersei on her list, who is working close with Kyburn and the Mountain, which the latter of the two also appears as an individual Arya plans to kill. I hope she doesn't get too upset when she finds out he's already a zombie. Cersei has so many people already who would like to drain the life from her, as well as a very popular prophecy that foretells her death. Arya may never make it to her in time, unless Volunkar actually means, well, uh, never mind, that's a whole different story. Just to knock out the characters residing in King's Landing, we also have Illyn Payne, the executioner or rightfully called the King's Justice. He's on the list for beheading Eddard Stark. Arya could cross him off the list while making an attempt for the Mountain and Cersei, but that plotline has kind of dropped into oblivion since the actor who plays Illyn was diagnosed with terminal cancer a few years back. But good news, he somehow managed to recover completely being free of cancer, so we may actually see a cameo from the good old Sir Illyn Payne after all. Next we have Beric Dondarrion and Thoros of Myr. You know the two guys from the Brotherhood Without Banners that sold Gendry to Melisandre? They just reappeared in Season 6 and they teamed up with the Hound a character who used to be on Arya's list until after being bested by Brienne and Arya refused to end his life. Since he was as good as dead the last time Arya was around, she may be a bit surprised when she encounters the Brotherhood. She may even reconsider her feelings on Sandor Clegane's fate, but probably not. They really seem to grow on each other in the earlier seasons. Finally, Melisandre, the red woman who took Gendry from Arya. She has just been banished from the north by Jon Snow. I'm not 100% sure the woman obsessed with King's Blood will obey the new King's orders, but she will likely cross paths with Arya. This encounter has even been foretold by the Red Priestess herself. I see a darkness in you, and in that darkness, eyes staring back at me. Brown eyes, blue eyes, green eyes, eyes you'll shut forever. We will meet again. Out of all the characters on the list, I have a feeling Melisandre will definitely have a future encounter with Arya. So your guess is as good as mine as to who Arya might kill in Season 7. Now for where she might be heading, I would have to assume the North, unless Arya has become this emotionless character that really doesn't care to see what's left of her Stark family after 6 seasons. There were more photos taken of cast members coming out of costume trailers in Northern Ireland, and a few of them even included Maisie Williams, the actress who plays Arya. She was wearing what many people reported to be Northern attire. Does that mean she is in Winterfell? 
Of course not. I mean, I'm sure that she will make it there at some point, but just because her clothes resemble Winterfell garb, it doesn't really mean anything. Arya could be wearing clothes that are fit for an identity she is using while navigating Westeros. You would think that she would want to stay out of sight and out of mind, especially being a Stark roaming around a continent that is currently run by Lannisters. The actor who plays Bran was inside the trailer at the same time, so I guess it does add more validity to the idea of a Stark gathering in their family castle. But what I've learned is not to get your hopes up. Everything is easier to handle if you don't get too settled on one theory or prediction. So we've covered her list, and we've covered how the Hound's revival may cause sparks with the highly volatile Lady Stark, as well as where her character is bound to travel to, which is the North, presumably. But what about Jack and Hagar? Jacken was left at knife point, or sword point, or whatever you want to call it, and Arya expressed her unwillingness to follow the program down there at the House of Black and White. She killed the waif, and Jacken oddly seemed happy about it. I didn't care too much for the waif either, but that's beside the point. The way things were left, I feel like we are not done with Jacken yet. We are definitely not done with him from the book's perspective. I won't expand on any of that, but if you want to know more, you should check out this video. Anyway, I know I'm not the only one who thinks the guy with the interesting hair will play a bigger role in all of this later down the road. It doesn't have to be the season premiere, and it really doesn't even have to be season 7. Maybe he comes back in the final season with a plot significance that comes out of left field. You would understand more if you watched that other video. Alright guys, I figured this could clear up some stuff about Arya Stark, or at the very least get you excited about all of the things that can come from just her character alone. Let me know if you enjoyed the video by pressing that like button. Let me know your thoughts on what we may see from Arya next season. Have a great day everyone, take care, and I will see you tomorrow.